Today we're going to talk about data and graphing. Many times I hear students say, what do I put in my chart? How do I set it up? Where do I put things? So today we're going to go through how to organize your data and how to set up your graphs. The first thing you should do is use your research question and your hypothesis as a guide. For an example, our problem could be, how does heart rate change during exercise? Our hypothesis could be that heart rate will increase as you exercise for longer periods of time. Our data clues here are heart rate and time. In order to organize our data, we need to determine our independent and our dependent variables. Usually, I like to use some clues to remember the difference between them. I like to look at the I in independent and say, I decide those values. So it's what the researcher has decided. So in our example we used before, how does heart rate change during exercise, the length of time to exercise is what I decided during my experiment. I could change the length of time. I could make it an hour, I could make it five minutes, but I get to decide that data. We can also call this variable the manipulated variable. So the one question you might think to yourself is, how long do you want to set up the experiment for? You decide that before your experiment starts. The other variable is the dependent variable. I like to look at the D in the dependent variable. That's our data. That's our data we're recording during the experiment. You can also think, this is what I'm going to do during the experiment. This is the data I'm collecting. Some people like to call this the responding variable. In our example that we used for how heart rate changes during exercise, our heart rate would be the dependent variable. This is the one we don't know before the experiment starts. So as we fill out our data table, this is the one that's going to be blank. So this is going to be the data we're going to collect during our experiment. So once we know our independent and our dependent variables, we then need to come up with how we're going to set up our data table. You need a title, which in this case you can use your independent variable and your dependent variable. For example, the effective exercise time on heart rate. I'm going to use my independent variable, exercise time, and my dependent variable, heart rate. We also need to have some column headings for our table. I usually like to use the independent as the first column because I can fill this out ahead of time before the experiment starts. This is the one that I set. So time in seconds, in this case I went from 0 to 240 seconds. We usually like to record these in increasing order. Then again, it also depends on your experiment. My dependent variable is going to be the second column. And you may have extra columns depending on the number of trials that you run. So in this case, my heart rate, I have it filled in pretending that I've already done my experiment just to give you some examples. Another thing to remember is that you need to include your units. In this case, my time in seconds and my heart rate in beats per minute. Once I have my data set up, I've done my experiment and I've collected my data, we need to do a graph in order to organize the data and display it in a more meaningful way so that we can look for trends. When we set up our graph, this also needs a title, and you can use the same title that you used from your data table, the effective exercise on heart rate. I need to decide what's going to go on my y-axis and what's going to go on my x-axis. So my y-axis is going to be the dependent variable. So my y-axis is the one that goes up and down, and that's the dependent variable, the data that I'm collecting. So I have to have my data before I can set this graph up so that I know the lowest number that I need to start with and the highest number. Don't forget that you need to label and include units. The scale needs to be evenly spaced on your graph. So if you look at this scale, if I started at 70, each box is worth 10 beats per minute. I go up 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, and so on until I go up to the top. You don't have to label every box. You can skip boxes. It just has to be that every single box has to be worth the same amount. Don't use values from the data table blindly. What this means is if I decided that I needed to go from 70 to 240, 
I can't just use the numbers that were in my data table, like 75 and 86, because then my boxes wouldn't be evenly spaced. And you don't have to start your y-axis at zero. This helps you to spread your data out across the graph and use as much of the graph as possible. Some hints. In order to get the scale, sometimes it's easiest if you count the number of boxes that you have in the range and divide that by the range that you have. As far as the x-axis goes, the x-axis is going to have my independent variable. So my independent variable, remember that was the one that I set up ahead of time, in this case is going to be time. So I'm going to put my time on my x-axis and I have to do the same things. I need to label and include units and I need to have an evenly spaced scale. So in this case, it starts at zero and it's going to go by 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Notice I didn't label every box in order to prevent crowding on my labeling. Once you get your data, a couple of tips for um, graphing your data points. You can connect the points with a line. You do not extend the line beyond the data points and you do not connect the data point back to zero if you don't have a data point that starts at zero. Only plot the data that you have collected. In our case, we don't like to extend the line. That would be called extrapolating. You don't do that unless you're asked to do that. Just plot the line for the data points that you've collected. One other thing to keep in mind is that you should have a key on the side. In this case, we haven't plotted our data yet, but if you have more than one set of data, an example would be multiple trials. If we did this experiment and we had multiple people exercising, or we tried this three times, we may have three lines of data. A couple of things to keep in mind is that if you have more than one line of data, you could use different symbols for each set of points and then have a key on the side to say which those point, which of those points collect, collected go towards. You could also use different colors if you happen to have an advantage of using different colors. Just make sure you include that in the key. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take the data that you had and I'd like you to plot that on the graph and when you come into class tomorrow, we're gonna take a look and we're gonna see how everybody plotted their data.